this show will be streamed on YouTube and Facebook at the same time. So today's guest is such an inspiration for me. And not only is Michelle a stroke survivor, but she also built a group called, I usually get this uh, messed up stroke, <laughs> stroke, well, God, stroke sweat squad. And I'll just leave it at that. So um, we'll just leave it at that. And we'll talk about uh, her group that she started, but uh, let's just welcome Michelle Jensen to the show. Hi. Michelle, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Jerry? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And Thank now, you can you see? Me. Oh, hey, my, my pleasure. Do you see the comments coming up? Um, so, so far, I don't see any comments, no. Uh, okay, because Salud is saying aloha. Do you know Salud, Salud, Salinda? Yep, she's in the group. Yep, I've seen her videos, her and her husband. He Yes, yes. And then Paul Quillen's here. Um, Deb's here. There's quite a bit. You'll see them. But anyway, I wanted to just um, start by saying good morning. And how, who is Michelle before you had your stroke? Who, you know, you had your stroke at 25 years old. Mm -hmm. So before my stroke, I was like, you know, part way done with my college degree i wasn't in school at the time i was just working and um i was just a normal 25 year old i guess right so you you had your you had your stroke and you were in the hospital for some time yeah i was in the hospital for like two plus months and then I got transferred to a nursing home because I couldn't um, yeah. swallow. I still had a feeding tube. And um, so I was in the nursing home for seven months. So it was a total of like 11 months that I was like from my car accident to um, when I got home. So. Wow. Wow. So, so when you had your stroke, did you... Did you, at your age, 25 years old, did you know what a stroke was? No. And what did you think? Yeah. I, my grandmother had a stroke and I visited her, you know, and so I knew, you know, and she didn't talk to, she didn't talk with us. We just talked together, like with her in like conversation, like trying to include her, you know, but yeah. she didn't talk. So she had aphasia, aphasia and I didn't know what it was. I just knew she didn't. Uh, you know, communicate with us. It was hard for her. Wow. And um, yeah, so then when I had mine, I knew that we both had a stroke, but it wasn't until I started like learning about like, so mine was left side affected. Hers, I know now is was right side affected. And wow. um, so it just, I learned it afterwards. I had no idea what it was. Right, right. It is crazy stroke. And I've always said, I heard um, Paul Cummings this morning repeat what I usually say is uh, stroke is not for the weak, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, also, you um, you said something in, in your, uh, like kind of like your bio, something about mindset. Because uh, did you have support emotionally? Because that, that's a tough part, going through the emotional part of this. It it really is. I had my parents, um, but that's it. Um, and they, you know, they, they were great, uh, but they di didn't know exactly what I was going through. And so it was hard for me to get into the mindset of I'm going to beat this. I'm going to stay strong and I'm going to, you know, kick the stroke, but I yeah. had none of that. So wow. Wow. start that attitude till years later. And so the mindset after a stroke, it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you not only, um, you actually have an online course um, through that you started and stroke sweat squad. And that's a tough thing to say for me. I know. I know. I, I didn't think about it when I went, the name just like kind of, 
I started like stroke sweat. Like I want to say the stroke sweat squat. I, I, it's, I don't know how I came up with it, but I didn't think about the S's until like Aaron started ta- saying it. I'm like, oh gosh, this really is kind of hard. So, <laughs> <laughs> but you do online, online courses or zoom type things. Yeah. So I, I, after my stroke, and after I um, started learning about what a stroke is and trying to work on my hand, um, I started looking into becoming a personal trainer. And so I like to do um, strength training classes with people. Um, it's been a little while since I've held one because I've been sick, but um, that's my, my where I, what I like to do is strength training because it's so beneficial to recovery um it's where yeah. i stood with mine and it's so helpful right right and even paul cummings i'm gonna bring so i i forgot that you can't see the comments so paul cummings is saying um uh, you can do anything michelle i'm so proud of you <laughs> thanks paul yeah yeah and mike peters he's from south wales uh, united kingdom says he struggled emotionally he felt he was a burden and wanted to end yeah. it. Did you feel isolated? Did I? Yeah. I I I felt very um I was with my parents, but I felt very alone. Yeah. I and I also had the a, a condition after all my car accident and stroke um to where I got very nauseous with food uh and um that that kind of affected me after my stroke too. You know, you get so depressed and I can't tell you how many nights I would lay in bed and just like, I want to die. I would want to die. I don't know how many times I called my mom saying that. I'm sure she was devastated, but um, it, it's just the thoughts that come to you because you feel like you can't do anything now. You feel like it's over. Yeah. No, I understand that. And you, you, like you said, you had a, like most of us had to learn to walk, um, talk. You couldn't talk. I mean, you spent <laughs> two and a half months in the hospital as far as, it was it in a coma? Two, and a, two weeks in a coma, two and a half months in the ICU, and then another month in another hospital room outside of ICU, and then the nursing home. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a yeah, it really is. And uh, just like Kevin is saying, she is right. Don't give up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so you um, uh, so you you had the same feeling as feeling isolated, didn't want to kind of do anything, but you you kicked it in the butt, right? I mean, you said that earlier. A couple years later. Uh my aunt and uncle invited me to visit them in Colorado and I've written about I have a blog I I and it's called exerciseforTherapy.com but so I write about this all the time I attribute my turnaround to them inviting me out to go hiking and to be outside I mean I just went to Colorado and they were outside every night that they could eat dinner outside my aunt was reading books and and just and going for walks during the day and it was just I so that's what I was doing with her and I as soon as I got back to Florida I was outside walking every day I I would walk to the gym a mile away to walk on the treadmill it was just kind of like a progression and then pick up weights and you see what you can do and and it's just it went from there wow Mike here says he started doing mi- mini challenges because of Michelle visiting the pound really? store. Yes. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. How's yeah, so. Going? Yeah, yeah, Mike. And uh, how are you doing, Mike? Uh, and Marina says, "Look how far you have come." <laughs> I'll get some of these comments out of the way here, but. Uh, Mary's from Wisconsin. She says hello. Um, and you know, your sidekick's here. Good morning, sidekick. John, John Loomis. 
You don't have to tell me his comments. <laughs> yeah, there, I know. There, there's just so many. Um, so ex exerciseforTherapy.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's what your site is. And um, so what what can we learn more about you? Because two, two years after your stroke, that's when you started thinking, okay, I'm going to I'm going to get over this thing and just try to um, recover. Right. But you have, what def deficits do you have now? So now, sorry. All the time. No. So now I, I have my left um, hand that does. So it, I, it opens and closes and it's a little stiff this morning, but um, so it opens and closes. Um, right now I'm working on trying to pinch things. I can't move this thumb um, very well at all. Um, I don't really have, I like I, I can't do this motion with it. Right. Um, and so that's my biggest problem. And the feeling in my arm is just kind of slowly creeping lower and lower. And it's just kind of, I, I, I hey. feel like it's right there. <laughs> yeah. Is it kind of tingly? Yes. Like, you know, you, I used to not be able to feel like up here, but now I can kind of, kind of sort of feel something in there. Yeah. I can definitely feel my nails and it's just kind of creeping down to where you can, well, that I can't feel, but it's getting there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so let's see, two years after your stroke out of the hospital, yep. um, and then did you uh, stick to therapy? after yours went on? So after I got out of the nursing home, I, so in the nursing home, they got me walking. Um, and honestly, I, I, for occupational therapy in the nursing home, I was in the gym one day and he filled a bucket full of water and stuck my left hand in it and said, is it hot or cold? And uh -huh. I said cold and it was hot. And wow. so that was it. They didn't do anything for my hand. Wow. Um, I had probably the minimum of 10 Medicare outpatients after the nursing home, but that's it. Wow. So you really had to do your own. Yeah. And 10 years later is when I did it. I didn't do it. Yeah. It took me a while to catch on. Right, right. Wow, that, that's just incredible. And good for you to not give up and keep going on that. Yeah, well, I attribute the group to that. I don't, it's the people in the, that joined the Stroke Squad, Squad, I can't even say it, that got me thinking that I can do it too. So. Wow. And um, <laughs> you asked... We asked how Mike <clears throat> is doing because of your inspiration. He is saying, because of Michelle, I invented games like putting pegs on a plastic ball. Yeah, really? Oh, wow. Okay, that's awesome. <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, well, that's good. I'm glad to see that because uh, <clears throat> you inspire me and what you're going through. And uh, like I've taken Leslie Hadley's class, and I do want to take yours um, for what yeah, you're doing, strength training. So you're going to send me a link. Yep. And you better be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I will. Trust me. I will. Um, yeah. I'm just, I'm just blown away with how you have overcome and just for your recovery is just remarkable. And I'm so proud of you watching your, I watch you all the time. Yeah. Well, I think that, everything that we share about our own journeys i mean you don't know who we are touching out there and there could be somebody that doesn't talk in any stroke group that you might be in and you don't know if your stuff is affecting them and helping them so i i love seeing videos i love seeing your videos i love, I love seeing everybody's videos comments it inspires me to do my yeah. journey and and in return, I hope I'm inspiring others to do their journey. In, in yeah, ex yeah, exactly. And that's why I, if I do my <clears throat> um, videos out there, I'm not doing it just for 
Well, the only reason I'm doing it is, like you said, inspire other people to look what I'm doing wrong, or maybe I'm doing it right. That's the other thing that, that, that I did the stroke squat, sweat squad for is uh, we, we've all been in OT and PT, and we've all learned from them. So what can, what do we now know that can help somebody else that's not able to be an OT or PT anymore? Because I got kicked out. And so the, I know tons of people have gotten kicked out after the minimum. Uh, so you don't know what you know that can help somebody else. Yeah. 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 I, I know. And, I, and I'm, we talked earlier and I, I do, I'm guilty of not doing, um, the therapy that I should be doing. And I think for me, I think maybe this COVID thing had a lot to do with it. I'm not making excuses, but I used to go therapy um, at least six months a year for last almost 10 years. Yeah. So it's hard to switch to being like self motivated or self propelling at home to do the therapy. Because, you know, a lot of people now have to do it at home. Yeah. So do you, do you still go to the gym or do you do any kind of stuff now besides doing your own at home? So now I have kind of accumulated quite a few pieces of equipment, probably more than one person needs, but th they're there anyway. And so now I can pretty much just do it at home, but you don't have to have anything to start working out at home. It, you, um, there are so many things that you can do without any equipment. And so that's where I started is with nothing. Right. Right. Um, Laurice Bells, Laurice says you are so inspiring, very inspiring, Michelle. Thank you. So you got a lot of fans out there. Yeah. I just want to go back to the stroke. Yeah. When you, that? I'd love to go back to the stroke because when you woke up, did you, and you realize, wow, I'm not sure is the right or left side. What, what did you think? I mean, like, Oh my gosh, I can't move. Well, I, I, what caused my stroke was a car accident. Um, and uh, so I woke up, during an induced coma, they kind of wake you up at intervals to just see that you're awake, wink, wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, kind of thing. Yeah. And I guess one of those, t I, I really have no memory of any of it. So I can't tell you what I thought. But what I can tell you is that I, I was just so hurt with other injuries that it didn't occur to me to worry about my left hand or le whether my left leg even worked. I had two broken femurs and so I don't even know if my left leg ever was affected. Uh, I just knew when I started walking seven months later, it was working. So. Wow. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know exactly how I felt. I just know it was, I woke up and this arm was tied to the bed. So I wouldn't take out the tube that was down my throat and then uh, this arm wasn't working. So I was just kind of stuck. I was in bed like that. Wow. You were in jail. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, wow. So yeah, I didn't realize you had two broken femurs. <laughs> yep. And a broken tibia. Uh, it, it, it was not a good car accident. It's pretty bad. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I don't, no one wants to hear that. But uh, so, did, so what caused the stroke? You think it was maybe surgery or just in, co a, a, in a coma or just? I I think it was in a coma, a blood clot, um, troubled due to not moving. Um, right. Is, is what I thought it was, but uh, honestly, I can't tell you hundred percent because my memory is so foggy from then. Right, right. Wow. So, so then there, you got out of the hospital and living at home, I assume. Yep. I went after the nursing home. I went to live with my parents for a couple years. And um, then after that trip to Colorado, just kind of 
uh, started thinking about finishing my degree that I started before the car accident. And um, so I went and t finished my AA at the local uh, college that I had been going to. And right. uh, then I moved out like my very first apartment on my own. And I had just had a stroke and I didn't have my left hand anymore. Uh, and I moved across the country. So by myself. <laughs> so I made a big jump to finish my bachelor's degree somewhere else. And you did that? Yes. Yep. I don't know how. Wow. My memory is terrible. I don't know how. But, but you know, when we want something, we can all do it. So. Yes, exactly. Um, so I, I know if you don't mind, there's probably a lot of your fans out here too. Uh, Marina says you're you're a miracle. Yeah, it pretty much. Yeah, and then yeah, Richard Cook. After hi, after four years of uh, the stroke, doctors have cleared uh, cleared. Said I'm fully recovered from the massive stroke. I don't think you ever fully recover, right? That's what I was thinking in my head. Is that possible? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and Naomi says Jean, her husband, was, was restrained for three weeks. <gasps> was he awake? I mean, if you know that you're like held up like that, it, that's a terrible feeling. Yeah, it, re <laughs> it really is. It's just... It is crazy, I mean, to be restrained for that long. And then Maureen also says you're in such an inspiration, and I'm sure there's so many people that you're helping getting through hard times right now. Bless you. And that's true. You know, that's why sharing this, this, um, these streams really help other people out. If we can help one person out, then it was worth that's it. Worth it. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and... Uh, and salute, you said you, you saw her and Tom, their, yep. their uh, videos, and Tom Houdini, in parentheses, um, still needs to be restrained after five years. Unbelievable. Um, but yeah, uh, there, there's so much to uh, things that I still want to, this is good for you, I think, um, Michelle. She inspires me to go to the 99 cent store. Don Ogan says that. Yes, uh, that's that was a good trip. I got a good haul. I mean, those are, I stack blocks every single day for my therapy to try to work on that pinch. And I got those blocks for $5, a big a Jenga set. And I do half of that four different times. So yeah, at least four times in one set and then more, more sets if I can, but so at $5 and you can have a pinching set. I don't know. I, I spent 25 and I still use everything. So good for you. That, that is good. Cause my grandkids will bring up, bring over their toys. And I use those two putting the pegs in a certain, yeah. all that stuff and they get them cheap, but I, I can use those. Yes, that's exactly. That's all you need. I, I went on Amazon recently to try to look for, um, it was, uh, who, it was Nick Golden that suggested, I think, grab one of those, like, uh, like construction sets where they have, like, screws. I think you yes. just said that. Yeah, he, I, I was just on Amazon looking for something like that. They don't make that anymore. I have so a simple set, like, from when I was growing up <laughs> and they don't have wow. it. Go, the dollar store, one of those, that's where we pick I, up some of the things. I need to go back to the dollar store. I don't have one. My mom was in town that trip, but, um, but I need to go back to look for that set because I want the screws because I do the work on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I know it. Naomi says when, when you asked, hit, uh, Jean was awake. Being restrained oh, for three weeks. That's just horrible. That's a terrible feeling. Yeah. That it is, you know, it's, it's crazy what's going on. But you 
you are an inspiration to everybody. I mean, what you have gone through. Thank you. I, uh, I, ho I hope so. That's all I try to, that's all I hope for, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I completely understand. Um, okay, yeah, and then David Caps says, being restrained just can, can just drive one over the edge. Yeah, it, you you can't do anything with both hands. I mean, it's just, it, it's just, it messes with you. And all you can do is lay in bed and do yeah. what? I, call for the nurse. I, I, it's just a terrible feeling. And it, yeah. it's awful. Yeah. In the beginning, I was restrained just for a little bit. And every time I got an itch, every time I had to be restrained, there's an itch. Yeah. And you try to move that arm, like not thinking it, and you can only go so far. Yeah, yeah. And your your sidekick John says erector set. That's what I want. I that's what I need. I need to find one. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> Excuse me. So so part of your your journey was to walk cuz you you had a lot more injuries than the stroke. Yeah. You didn't realize um, it. Right. I I couldn't walk with physical therapy for seven seven months, I think, is when I learned to walk post-stroke um, because of all the injuries um, at, and uh, surgeries on my legs that I had to have. So, um, so yeah, it was a little bit, I don't know if it's more complicated, but it definitely put a time delay on the progression of everything. Right, right. So now, now you're working on just your fine motor skills in your hand. Yep, just my hand, my fingers. Um, I pretty much have full range of motion of the arm. Um, wow. It's just the wrist and hands and fingers. Yep. And in your legs, you're walking fine and all that? Yep, walking. And if I, I, it's so crazy. I didn't know I liked to run until... I couldn't run. And so now I yeah. try to run. Do you have the same feeling with something? Yeah. Yeah. I I can't run, but uh, and you want to. It's like you it, but you didn't run before the stroke. And so that's I, I don't know if that's your same mindset, but that that was mine. I didn't run before, but now I want to every day. But yeah, it's not always possible, but I try. Yeah. Hey, that's all you have, That's all you can do is just try, just get out there and do it. Yep. Yeah. So, you, but it sounds like you're progressing so far. I mean, you've done so much in 10 years. I mean, 10 years go, goes by fast. Well, 11 years You for 11 years. I love it. Yep. I just turned 11 years post. Yep. Wow. That, that's remarkable. Um, so you were intubated. Um, it, 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 that's where the, the tube is down your throat, the, um, the ventilator. Yeah. Uh, the trach, yep, yep. The trach, yeah. Um, it, I'm just looking at some of these comments here and you're bringing up a lot. Uh, like oh, Naomi cool. saying, <laughs> yeah, like Gene was intubated the second time and he asked, to be restrained. Wow. Really? Unbelievable. I, you know, but having that thing down your throat, it's almost like a, it's just a, it's your natural instinct to want it out. And so yeah. I see that too. Yeah, I, I do remember that in the hospital when I finally realized something's in me. First thing I tried to do was pull it out. Yes, that's that's what the nurses said. Everybody's first instinct is is to um is to go go for that and pull it out when they exactly. Wake up, so. And how long when you were how long did it take you to start talking again? Um. So that's one good thing I can say about the nursing home is I had a speech therapist coming to my bedside, even as as much as like three or three months out, maybe two, three months out, yeah, three or four is when she started coming around trying to get me to talk. 
I had a whisper of a voice. Um, and even to be able to talk like I do today, I had surgery on my vocal cords. Uh -huh. um, and so, uh, yeah, so she would come to my bedside, work with me on like, you know, working with your tongue in the right spots to make the right sounds. And so that's one good thing. She went through the nursing home with me like the whole time. So that was awesome. And I had so, outpatient. So. Yeah. So, so did you feel that you had good therapy even, and they, they got you ready to, because this didn't, this for me, they put me at, when they put me out there in the world after I was done from inpatient therapy and outpatient, they gave me a t-shirt and said, here's some, uh, some papers and start doing it. I was they lost. Really you, I, that's awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just wonder, I mean, because we didn't know what to expect after I relied on my therapist in patient, mm -hmm. you know, working right. and then they send you home. You, you, we feel you're good enough to just go home and do your own thing. Yeah. Oh, I was lost. I didn't do anything. I didn't know what to do. I, and I, looking back, I don't feel like I got therapy. I mean, they did what they could. They got me to walk and I, that's it. I did steps. We did steps, but you know, that's just the bare minimum to walk around in the world, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. They're out there to see a balance and core strength training. They're not doing that with you. And that's part of walking and that's part yeah. of the thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I hate to blame them. I know. I I'm the same. I don't want to blame. It was, they did good. I'm here now. Yes. And um, it, it's fine now. So, uh, but it could have been better. That's all I can say. Yeah. No, I, I, 100% with you on that because it really does. Uh, that's one thing I think about all the time, more and more that, you what know, is. yeah, they just didn't, they, I hate to, I don't even know why I'm saying that. I wasn't prepared to get, out in the world and just fend for myself. I don't know if that's a weak excuse or not. I mean, that's why I kind of do what I do now. Uh, I That's why I started a, a coaching, you know, in personal training business because you need that transition sometimes for some people it, that you need that help. And sometimes it's just the motivation and the mindset part of it. But the, but you need more support after coming out like a, a stroke therapy pamphlet of groups in your area. I mean, even something like that would just be a step above what, you know, you got and what I got. And so it would just be a good thing to connect yeah. with other survivors because I don't know how long it took you to get <laughs> on Facebook. It took me uh, three, three years to find stroke groups support groups yeah. on facebook and uh so that's when i started connecting with other people who knew what i was going through so yeah that, that's so true i was i was lost when i got out i didn't i i didn't realize that getting on the internet i could find somebody else that right what you're what you're just saying i was embarrassed for myself that i had a stroke really oh that's should never feel embarrassed about it. Oh, but when I first had it, that's what I thought about, you know. Yeah, I was embarrassed with the stroke support group. Did you go to stroke support groups? No, I, nope. I had, I didn't do anything back then. Um, I think my parents asked the doctor if they should take me, but I, even that, I don't know. I, my mom still tells me things now that I didn't know happened back then. So, uh, but it, that's so, it's just so crucial to connect with other people who know what you're going through and can help. Yeah. Them. And that's why I'm doing these and uh, being a part of a, a group, like these stroke support groups that we're all involved in. Um, it's like therapy for me. Yeah, 100%. You know? Yeah. It really, it really is. It's really helped me out tremendously. And you doing your own thing. I mean, as far as the therapy, now you're doing your own mm -hmm. thing because you realize what 
we all need. Yeah. After, and if you can help somebody. Yeah, after going through my therapy and after doing the studies with personal training, it's like, it's like a, there's just so many, the body is just so interconnected. And if one thing is off, then this thing is making up for that thing. And so it's like, then you got to work this and get that back. And so there's just like a big connection. And so sometimes it's muscle connection, muscle mind connection. And sometimes it's, just, you know, a, a parallelism that you have to work on and move with your other hand. And so there's just, you, there's just all those connections. And um, so now I took what I learned from them and I took what I learned from, from my studies and working for me so i'm i'm super excited yeah well i'm proud of you doing that thanks yeah and we in the very beginning i was asking you about mindset and i could see john loomis just said mindset is a is a big one mm -hmm. yeah it, if you're depressed you're not at, at least for me i was super depressed and um i didn't engage with the world i just existed i just laid in bed or watch TV and I exist. You know, you can only be entertained by Judge Judy for so long, you know. <laughs> she she's very entertaining. I hate to say it. I I I think it's, she's actually she's amazing. She is hilarious, but <laughs> I didn't I could only watch her for so long. I had to get out and walk, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's funny. Now, Jennifer Koska, I met, I met, said I was embarrassed that I had a stroke in the beginning. And she said the same thing. She was embarrassed. But well, not the funny thing, but what happened to me was uh, when I first had my stroke, my the therapist there, inpatient, the hospital, well, we need to go to the um, support, support group in the hospital. So, uh, so I went. I went. I sat in the back. The way back kind of hid behind everybody because I thought only old people had strokes. And uh, then, I, then I sat there and they asked me questions. I didn't want to say one thing, but now I'm totally fine. I, I want to help other people out like you, you do. Yeah. One person. And that leads to other people. Yeah. So. Good thing. Everybody's it, doing each other. Right. So John is also saying sweat squad is the best, best leader, best warriors. Probably. <laughs> I think it's the group because it's, it's everybody in the group. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is amazing. So what else can you actually um, tell people out there that, uh, that are feeling, what do you call it? Like down in the dumps and I had a stroke, even, because there's a lot of, I hate to say it, there's a lot of newbies stroke survivors out here that, uh, and they feel, I'm not going to get any better. This is my life. Yeah. So what I can say, first of all, I, I can say that I have, I say the word paralyzed. Never. I never, that's, I said it twice during our talk so far and I kind of stumbled about saying it the first time because I didn't want to say it because I feel like if you get that in your head, like this is paralyzed and it's never going to move again, um, then you stop trying and you stop hoping and you stop thinking it could happen. And um, I think if you can get over those kind of blocks and um, maybe... I know depression is part of it too. Um, and so what I can say is self-talk is so important. It sounds stupid. It sounds cheesy. But no. If you tell yourself, you're never going to get better. You're never going to get better because you're never going to try because you don't think it's possible. And so if I keep telling myself my arm is paralyzed, well, guess what I'm going to do? Never, I'm going to let lay it in my arm and I'm never going to try. Um, but if you just start movement, any kind of movement, I'm partial to ex exercise because that's what helps me is that walking. 
um, that brings so many endorphins to the body, to the brain. It's so healing, movement of any kind. Yes. Um, so that is my personal thoughts on getting over the roadblocks of mindset is positive self-talk and and getting out there and moving like just move your you know i as we've been yeah. sitting here i've kind of been my hand and um even that just stretch your fingers out and so that's that's where i go when i i think of mindset is moving my body in some way yeah i i 100 percent i agree and Lori says i think my Bo says, I was embarrassed because of aphasia. And sometimes it, it, I have expressive aphasia. And what I'm at a point where, you know what? To me, it's funny. For me, I get, I get over it. You know, people, people may look at me and say, what are you saying? And whatever, I just blow it off. I don't know if it's the right thing to do, but I, I have a positive mental attitude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I do have to say, I, I used to, because I, I could talk very well. Um, and even now, I think I stumble over my words a lot when I try to talk fast. Yeah, um, yeah. But my dad would talk to me over the phone when I was in the nursing home. And he'd be like, Michelle, what? And he'd say, what, what? And I would get so frustrated trying to repeat yeah. myself, repeat myself. And even now, I hate repeating myself. But All right, I'll remember that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you, you can't talk. And so I've been there. I totally, I, I couldn't talk. And I just, you know, I, I don't leave my stroke out there, but I also don't hide it anymore. You know, it's, yeah. I have a few. It's, it's, it's who I am. It's what it's yeah. what happened, and I'm yeah. for it. Exactly. And um, Paul Quillen says, "Yes, it takes a lot to build our confidence back after stroke." It, yeah. You did that. I mean, it's, you're a prime example. Yeah, a couple a couple of years, you know, but but I'm there. You are. You're you're there, and and you're showing everybody that if I can do it, you can do it. Yeah, if if you and I are out there making gains at ten plus years, I promise everybody two years and under, you guys got this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, there's I after the show when you have time to go through some of these comments, there is a yeah. ton, and they're absolutely <laughs> terrific. I mean, your comments are so. Great. There's so many. I, I can't read them all, but I'll go through them later and respond to them. But please share this because I love how you're such a great prime example how to overcome what you've overcome. It's all you can do is move forward. I mean, the time is going to pass anyway. You might as well work on it. Yeah, exactly. I don't, you, I, I think you don't look back either. I mean, you know, you get in those mindsets sometimes where you're like, yeah. oh, God, what if? And um, I wish, but then you, you got to throw that out after a few minutes and get over it and just tell yourself that you're in a good place and you can, you got the road ahead of you and you can pave that road yourself. Yeah. yeah. There was one question I, I never asked is, were you because this happened to me? Were you ever told you plateaued? No, but no, then again, oh, good for you. I didn't have the doctor's support for the stroke. I mean, I mean, other than OT outpatient, my 10 or I don't even feel like it was 10, but I don't have good memory. But I, yeah, that, those sessions back then, I'm sure she was like she plateaued she's not getting any better and so that that was them throwing me out so but she didn't tell me to my face but i know now probably that's what she was thinking but that, yeah I, i'm gonna show her you know yeah because a year after mine i didn't really know about neuroplasticity 
and how that all worked. I didn't know what that is. And one of my therapists said, well, you just got to get used to this because you have plateaued, but just, I, I said, oh, well, what? I don't even know what that was, plateau. I mean, I didn't know anything, but, you know, that was 10, nine years ago that I, she, I was told that. Did, did she tell you about neuroplasticity or, or did you learn about that more recently? I learned it during all these, these groups here. I uh, like, yeah, the, the, through this stroke support network that we yep. all, the, you know, are all involved with. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And too. yeah. And Dr. Karen Sullivan, you know, she is. Yep. I, I've seen her videos. Um, I know she's doing that. Um, the, series right now i don't know if it's called a seminar but uh but something going on right now with her yeah i mean i go i go to that yeah okay yeah yeah so you know you know yeah every thursday she's unbelievable and the fun good thing is is um let's see i'm kevin says you're right michelle leave your mistakes in the past yeah you have to yeah and, and salute says gratitude Mm -hmm. There's just, yeah. I, and uh, Paul says, Sharon, Jerry, and Michelle, great show. Um, so much value, so much insight, so much wisdom, so much courage. Thank you, Paul. I thought you were on your on the road on the road, but um, yeah. So I, I really appreciate you being on the show. You've really, it means a lot to me to have you on, and the inspiration that you give to everybody. I love being here, so I I I will come anytime. <laughs> oh, oh that, that's that's awesome. Um, grab a few more comments. Just Michelle is an example for everyone. Just love her no. from Don Ogan. Oh, I love Don. <laughs> <laughs> I know we all do. Um, oh, Na Naomi says amazing show, and that's because of you, Michelle. You just seriously, you've got. Like, like you said, or somebody else said, I said it once too, just um, sharing this to somebody. Yeah. You know, like for inspiration, because it does. It really is amazing. Um, okay. So Paul Cummings says, Siri doesn't understand me at all. Phasia. I said shared, not Sharon. Okay, sorry. <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah. Alexa, you know, she for yeah. me all the time. So, yeah, I, I got Google and Siri. No one understands me either because I, I have to scream at it. it yeah. yeah, me too. Don't worry. You are not alone. <laughs> ah, that's good. So, since we're down like to the end here, what like, I know I asked it early, earlier. Uh, let's just to do the general public doesn't know anything about neuron. Neuron. Ne Sorry, Serena. Yeah. But I think I know what you mean. Yeah, the public doesn't know it, neuroplasticity and all that. Nope. I didn't learn about it until I started doing research for a blog post. And then I'm like, oh, my gosh, all this stuff I can do to, I mean, that's why therapy is working or can work if you be consistent about it. It's all about consistency and doing it you know uh right. so and the neuroplasticity that it is all the repetitions it is repetition rep i mean that's all this is so true so true do you, I, I know i keep saying okay we're almost done done but do you ever use um mirror therapy so yes i i, I love that. that yes i don't have that mirror box thing but i watch myself in the mirror when i yeah. look out i turn to face that mirror every single time yeah it's so good because my ther one of my therapists said the same thing get the big mirror in front of you but then i didn't like looking at myself <laughs> it was kind of a strange thing but i got over it and i'm okay i'll you know and i do the same thing what you're saying same thing yeah but uh I can't move them because I got a big glare on my screen. So, but, uh, oh. but once again, I just want to say thank you 
thank you and thank you. You inspire me. Come in on, or come on the show. I'm excited to be here. Ah, terrific. Well, yeah. Um, thank you so much. And you guys that are all out here, I mean, this, you guys, there's a lot of people out here. Um, and you can just stay, on, stay up here, um, Michelle, and I'll, we can end it. Um, but thank you guys for all being here. It means a lot to me, and I'm sure Michelle, to be all the support. It makes, you know, it touches me. So thank you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and um, we'll talk to you later.